Hello students, this is Mr. Olivo, and this is the first in the series of a set of resources that are going to be made this year to help you adjust to the current learning format that we are going to be engaging in considering uh, the current pandemic. So as the title slide says, it says, what is HyFlex? Well, HyFlex is the learning format you're going to be engaging in this year. And I'm going to explain that to the best of my ability and as concisely as possible. And then we're going to compare it to the remote instruction that may have happened last year between March and June for you. And give you a few tips on how to keep yourself uh, motivated and set up to be successful. This is the definition of a high flex course. And these are class sessions that allow a student to choose whether to attend class face to face or online synchronously or asynchronously. So it's gonna be very important to break this definition down and talk about how it really applies at our school. The first thing is you don't get to choose whether or not to attend class face-to-face -face or online. That choice is gonna be made for you. And I'll get into the synchronous and asynchronous components in a second. So let's delve a little bit deeper into this. How does this definition change for BT? You don't really have a true choice about your format for attendance. That choice is going to be made um, by your parents, possibly you know with some input from you, or possibly at a at a at a political level, depending on how things progress over the next couple of months. Also, HyFlex was designed at the university and graduate school level, so when HyFlex was made, it wasn't really made considering the the sort of attitudes and learning styles of high school students, which are different than students in university and undergraduate programs. At Bergen Tech, there's going to be daily asynchronous and synchronous components to a lesson. So it might make sense, just a little bit, to explain the difference between the two. Synchronous instruction is just instruction that occurs in real time during your class. So whatever this, you know, if you have a class scheduled during period two, this is the instruction that happens at that time. Examples, as they're defined here, you have like Zoom lectures that happen during scheduled class times, discussion with students in Zoom breakout rooms that are happening in that time, perhaps interviews with teachers where they provide you feedback on an assessment, or classroom activities that can be completed at the close of class. This is in contrast to asynchronous instruction, where this could literally be happening at any point in the day. So examples of this would include pre-recorded material from a teacher or a possible web resource uh, like Khan Academy on a particular content or skill. You could learn that at literally any time. It doesn't need to happen during class time. Discussion board posts with other students. You could do this at any point in the day after your teacher opens the discussion board and there may be little loss in terms of the interaction happening between student to student. Written feedback on assessments from teachers can be read outside of class time, and there are classroom activities that can be completed outside of class time. For example, everyone's favorite thing in the world, homework. So why does the synchronous component exist? Well, it's all about this magical word that appears a lot in high flex literature, interaction. To have successful student remote learning there needs to be a certain level of interaction. And the more interaction, the more meaningful interaction, the better. So here's a sample agenda from October 1st of this year. Let's say you have a teacher who posts they want uh, their class to compare different COVID-19 tests. And this is happening in a lecture in Zoom at the start of the class. Then for the rest of the period, there's going to be a review of the FDA testing basics as a team and they try to determine the strengths and weaknesses of each testing process. Then that group is going to break out into its individual members, and they're going to create a Flipgrid video arguing for how testing should be expanded in a geographic area where the RT value is hovering above 1. Sorry if this is getting a little technical for some of you, but you'll see my point in a second. Lastly, they will have at least... Every student for homework, basically, is going to respond to at least two Flipgrid arguments by tomorrow at the start of class. Here you have real-time interaction with the teacher, which is synchronous, in the form of a Zoom lecture where there can be questions asked between 
the students and the teacher, and the teacher can pose questions to other students as well. It doesn't matter if you're in the classroom or at home. There's going to be common activities that are synchronous. There's actually two in this lesson. Uh, the second part of the agenda and the third part both meet that criteria of having common activities that are occurring. One is with groups, one's with individuals, but they're happening synchronously. And lastly, interaction with peers is happening, in this case, asynchronously. But even due to the limitations of everyone being separate or only half the class being in school at a time, everyone is included. And it's, it's aiming for that equity of, of instruction for all class members. So what works for students? Well, from what we can tell at this point, it's common activities and shared experiences remotely that really help. And those can be things like uh, discussions. And it says in parentheses here, but aim for trying to be in sync. If a, if a teacher posts a discussion board post, don't reply to it right before it's due. That's not really having a conversation. That's just letting your peers do the work and then you kind of wait and swoop in at the last second. There's minimal interaction there. Another component of this is reflecting on your personal learning. Your teacher may formally structure that for you, but if they don't, you're strongly encouraged to think about journaling how each day is going in this type of learning. What's working for you? What's not working for you? Because just complaining about how you don't find this format as helpful as being in school every day may not change the fact that we can't all be in school every day until the current pandemic gets under control. You have to think critically about how to adapt and adjust. The other thing is topical content. So content is directed by the teacher, but you can generate connections beyond class material to make it meaningful to you and for you. And even if you can, you know, work collaboratively with your teachers to try to think of some activities or content that's in a subject area that's really appealing to most of you, it's a great way to get hooked on what it is that you're learning. Now, not only is this specified in books on hybrid uh, flexible course design, it's also reflected in a book that we talked about last year called Make It Stick, The Science of Succe Successful Learning. And we're going to get more material out there to students to help support them as they go through this. But one thing to note is they mention retrieval practice, so like quizzing yourself on a regular basis about what you're learning, space retrieval, going back to things you may have learned earlier. Uh, it can be very helpful in self-learning and keeping yourself engaged with what it is you're learning. Interleaving is this idea of mixing up your skills from time to time to see if you can see the connections between a skill that you learned earlier in the year and later in the year. Elaboration is directly tied to common activities and shared experiences. Can you elaborate in a discussion with what, about what you're learning in class? Generation is a little bit different, but it's, it's trying to solve problems before the teacher formally teaches you on it. So try to engage in some low stakes attempts at moving ahead with material and reflection. So what we see in Make It Stick as something that's really important for grounding students in their own learning is also what people who are, who are engaging in high flex learning are saying is very helpful to students in those types of programs. And I know that this is not easy. It's not easy from, from a student's perspective. It's not easy from a teacher's perspective. It is less than ideal, but we have to adapt to the current situation we're in to ensure that we keep on learning, keep on learning new things that we're passionate about, and you know, keep, keep progressing with our education. Our plan at a school level is to try to give you more resources like this that sort of support this very broad spectrum video that you just got and give you more directed supports as you move forward throughout the year. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. And, you know, if, if I can't help you, I'll try my best to find someone who can. Thank you for watching this and take care. Be safe.